all right the neptune rocket is finally fully constructed and now everything should be ready for launch all i need to do is activate the launch sequence right here and i can finally see my family again you know i was thinking though it's been so long i've almost forgotten what pizza tastes like isn't that crazy but uh yeah anyways uh, let's get the heck out of here uh what on earth is that noise i don't think it's the rocket anymore. Welcome everyone to Socknautica, a huge Subnautica mod created by YouTuber Socks for one that adds a brand new quest for you to complete before you can launch the Neptune rocket in Escape 4546B. I will add that this mod is more about having fun fighting and killing leviathans rather than being realistic, but either way, be sure to check out Socks for One's channel and the video he made on this mod. He invested a ton of time and money into its creation, so massive thanks to him. But now, let's dive right into all the juicy content this mod adds. Alright, I'd like to start off this video on the title screen because as you can see right here, there's been a couple additions. First of all, it now says Socknautica, we have a little sign that says Sock in front of the normal sub, and then there's also a couple Reaper Leviathans doing who knows what, jumping out of the water and everything. Now as far as I know, this is the second mod I've seen actually modify the title screen from what I remember at least, and the other one if you remember would of course be the Gargantuan Leviathan mod. But anyways, let's go ahead and load into the game here. The second thing you'll notice immediately is that the loading screen has kind of changed. Now, this thing to me is honestly really, really cool. It's animated and everything, and it just looks awesome in my opinion. It would have definitely been cool to have like dynamic changing loading screens depending on how far you progressed in the game in the original vanilla Subnautica. And there is actually another loading screen. Let me see if I can show you that really quickly here. And yeah, here it is. It looks awesome. I mean, the artwork is just seriously amazing. This time we have a huge submarine instead of the Ghost Leviathan and the tank kind of thing. Now, really quickly, I'd like to just add a couple things about that Neptune rocket animation. I will say I added in the rocket boost and some of the sound effects after I actually recorded it. Like, those aren't actually in game. And this was, of course, to just make it sound and look a little less goofy than it actually is. It's a cool animation, but it was made very last minute, and so it couldn't really be totally perfected, unfortunately. But yeah, anyway, so after the Neptune rocket is destroyed, you get a PDA voice line and a signal to this breached aquarium thing over here. Now, this is really where the new storyline I told you about kicks in. All right, welcome everyone to the breached aquarium base right here as you might have guessed it's a new alien base and as you also might have guessed we are now in the void now unfortunately you can't really see anything so let me go ahead and turn off fog really quickly there we go that's a little bit better as you can see we have these floating islands all around us and then this alien base right here is on a really big new structure that is now present in the void you also might notice this guy up here and this new guy over here i'll come back to both of them a little bit later don't you worry now these void islands right here are honestly pretty cool i will say they are a tad bit barren some of them are a little bit better than others though i'll show you a couple more of these guys later but yeah as you can see they'll occasionally have like flora on them and of course they're held up as normal by these massive floaters but yeah it's definitely a cool idea for there to be islands in the void all right let's check out the breached aquarium itself now now i do have a guess for the purpose of this space from what i understand a lot of the new leviathans that this mod adds and everything were supposed to come from this aquarium they were just kind of being kept here and they were able to escape and reproduce and everything and so that's why we all of a sudden see these new creatures in Subnautica. They escaped basically right after the Neptune rocket was eaten by that massive Leviathan thing, right? The only confusing part about this thing is how exactly did all these Leviathans reproduce really quickly? Because there's a lot of new Leviathans, that's all I will say. But yeah, the whole inside here is pretty dang cool, I will say. And the alien base so far is honestly just really, really well designed. Now there is an upper level up here and a lower level down here we can still explore. As you can see throughout the entire base, there's a ton of random creatures everywhere which would of course make it very difficult to explore especially if you're in survival over here it looks like we have a new terminal right here let's see what it's going to give us well there we go looks like that's the next alien base we're going to have to head to there is also this area over here you can kind of sneak into i don't really think there's anything over here or there's supposed to be anything but it is still there i guess over here we do still have some interesting stuff as you can see we have these precursor cases right here there's also this huge creature egg for the gulper leviathan now this leviathan was actually added with the, the extinction mod if you'll remember but now you can hatch it in alien containments and everything 
so yeah, that's cool. And then we also have these interesting crystals right here. These are known as Prasurium crystals. I think that's how you pronounce that. But yeah, let's go ahead and grab these guys, I suppose. We're definitely going to need them a little bit later. All right, it's time to explore the upstairs area over here. We got two ways we can go here. Over on this side, it looks like we have another sea dragon skeleton, besides the one that can already be found in the Lost River. But through this door right here is where the really interesting stuff is at. I'm not exactly sure what these are supposed to be, but they're floating and they honestly look pretty cool. There also appears to be some sort of door underneath them. Maybe these are like mines for killing the creatures inside of the aquarium, if that ever needed to happen. Either way, it doesn't look like they were used and it seems the Leviathans escaped. And then of course we have another new terminal right here. This one's yellow, so it's going to give us some sort of blueprints. All right, here we go. New blueprint synthesized dad submersible. All right, we're definitely going to have to build that a little bit later. And then when it comes to this room over here, there's just another skeleton, nothing too special. And I believe that wraps up the entire aquarium base. All right, so the first thing I want to check out is the dad submersible. As you can see, we have a new vehicle right here known as the dad submarine. It's kind of cut off. There we go. You can see it. And ignore the guy at the very bottom. We're technically not supposed to have him, but he kind of shows up because we're in creative. Anyways, this is apparently a large vehicle designed for stealth based attacks in dangerous environments and is also apparently powered by solar energy. All right, let's go ahead and build them. And there we go. As you can see, it's a pretty big sub. And you also might have noticed that we used the Prasurium crystals that we got in that base, the aquarium base, to actually build this up, which of course makes sense progression wise. All right, here we go. Now that is a big submarine, guys. A lot bigger than the Cyclops. I really like the, the shape of it, the design. It, it looks pretty good in my opinion as you can see the dad stands for deep sea aquatic defense of course submersible and then we got this massive engine back here as well holy that's how you know this thing goes fast i guess all right but anyways to actually enter the sub we're gonna have to enter through this moon pool area right here and welcome aboard the dad but yeah, welcome aboard. This moon pool area honestly looks really good. It's definitely, keep in mind, this is a modded submarine, so it's definitely not going to look like a submarine the developers would have added. But I really like this moon pool idea. Like, this is the only entrance and exit to the submarine, from what I understand. We got some information about the sub right here, a couple other things over there. I believe these are actually the power cells that power the sub. Yep, there you go. And let's go ahead and head up this ladder. We got ladder animations and everything. All right, as you can see, there's nothing to our right here, but over here we have a room we can check out. More information about the sub. We got a few interesting pictures over here relating to socks for one. Another one over here, some books, and a nice bed we can sleep in. So yeah, this is just kind of your quarters for when you're done piloting the sub, I suppose. I do wish there had been more quarters. I'll show you in a minute. There's definitely space for them. But let's go ahead and check out this area up here. This is kind of an empty area. Then we also have the command center and everything over here. You can enable stealth mode right here. I'll show you that in a minute. Got some lab equipment and everything, and then we can pilot the sub from here. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, here we go. I really like how that thing like goes out like that when you activate the sub. I don't know. I just think it looks really cool. And as you can see, we have a couple of options to work with on either side. But first of all, let me just move this guy around for you. As you can see, it's pretty fast. Definitely faster than the Cyclops. Let's check out these cameras right here. There we go. Basic upper camera. And then we also got the lower camera right here. Pretty standard. Nothing else on this side. Let's go ahead and check out what this is. Stealth mode. Stealth here we go. Engaged. Wow, that voice is really loud, but as you can see, we are now invisible from the looks of it. And so, yeah, this is kind of how you avoid attacks from Leviathans, I suppose. This isn't going to last forever, but it's a definitely a cool idea. It's a little trippy walking around, I will say. There's a couple of things that uh, don't get stealth activated, like those power cells. Ah, oh, come on, I was just about to disengage it. But anyways, there's also this deterrent system right here, which basically just acts like the normal Seamoth one, the perimeter defense, I believe it's called we also have this holographic decoy right here let me show you what that is and there we go we have a bunch of uh decoys i suppose for leviathans to attack instead of us and that's honestly probably my favorite feature of this sub that's a really cool idea and i think it's executed quite well but yeah i hate to admit it but that's actually everything
everything there is to see relating to this sub. Let me show you it in free cam here really quickly. As you can see, it almost feels like there's a lot of empty space. I feel like we could fit like at least three more uh, bedrooms right here because I mean, this could kind of be operated by a full team of maybe four people, maybe even more. Then I also feel like this should have been extended over here and we could have had like an engine room and everything. It just kind of feels like wasted potential. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is still super cool and mad respect for the people who put this in the game, but it still feels like there's a few things missing. It doesn't quite feel complete. Definitely an amazing sub. I will say that. And yeah, here's another pretty good look at the sub. All right. I want to show you some of those new creatures that were down by the aquarium base now. So the first one is known as the abyssal blaza. Now, if you remember the old blaza, I'll spawn that in right now. All right. Yeah, here we go. You might recognize this guy. He's also, I believe SCP. I can't remember the number. I think it's 3000. He's also been called that before, but now let me show you the new blaza. And here we go. You'll definitely remember this guy from earlier. He's pretty big. It's like the new and improved version of the Blaza, basically. Oh, it looks like they're gonna be fighting each other. But yeah, it looks a lot cooler, in my opinion. All sorts of cool bioluminescent colors and everything on him. Lots of purple and pink, it seems. Now, the next creature is known as the Ancient Bloop. Again, you'll remember the Bloop. He's actually right over there. Yep. This is what the old Bloop looked like. I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but he is quite large. And now here's the new Ancient Bloop. And yeah, here we go. This creature is very interesting. I'll say that much. The scales are kind of weird. Same with the coloring. I can kind of see the similarities between the two, but this guy must have seriously undergone some serious evolution right here. But yeah, this is the second creature that's been added to the game. You got glowing yellow eyes and everything too. Dang, okay. All right, and as I turn around here, you're gonna see the new creature I just spawned in, but it doesn't really look like a creature, at least at first. So this guy is known as the anglerfish, and you're gonna see why in just a minute. So imagine you were out in the void and you saw this, right? You'd think, oh, another alien base. Let's go check it out. Well, this is what happens when you decide to check it out. Of course, I am in creative. Keep that in mind. Okay, yep. It's not actually an alien base. It's a massive creature that's now trying to eat me, but it can't because I'm in creative. Uh, you can kind of let go now, guy. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. But yeah, here we go. You can kind of see what this guy looks like. We got a couple big glowing eyes right here. And then, of course, uh, the lure right here, as is classic with anglerfish. And then this massive mouth that's trying to eat me right there. Very interesting concept. I'm not exactly sure how this guy came to evolve on this planet. Maybe he was modified by the precursors. Not entirely sure, but definitely a cool concept. And it was definitely a jump scare the first time around. All right. Anyways, now it's time to check out the outpost cache, which is the signal we got from the aquarium base. And this time it's an approximate location. All right. Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to the void. Again, you can't really see anything except that anglerfish up there. I'm not heading over there. Don't worry. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off fog. And yeah, here we go. We got a couple alien structures in the area. This guy will become important later. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of technology around here on these floating islands. And then, of course, as you might have guessed, we have the alien base right here. Now, this is just a basic outpost cache, according to the signal. Let's go ahead and see what it's all about. It's on this cool floating island right here. Again, it does kind of feel a little barren. But yeah, I definitely like the design of this alien base so far. That's what I will say. All right, let's head inside. We have this interesting peeper guy. I think this this might be the Alpha Peeper, although I will say the Argantium Leviathan version of the Alpha Peeper looks way cooler. And then, of course, we have this bone kind of thing inside of this precursor case. And it looks like we have two terminals here. All right, data terminal right here. What did we get? New blueprint synthesized sock tank. That is very interesting. We're also going to have to build that in just a minute here. And then we also have this Abyssal Crystal. If you're connecting the dots here, maybe we'll have to use this guide to build the sock tank. Let's collect the one over here here as well and let's see what this terminal is looks like we have yet another alien base guys we'll check it out in just a minute here but yeah that's basically everything there is to see about this alien base it's a cache so it's not going to be really big once again let's go ahead and build the sock tank first here we go sock tank it also is an acronym subaquatic operations and combat kit tank it's a small heavily armored vehicle designed to conquer dangerous underwater environments that is also equipped with various utilities for offensive and defensive things 
things. As you can see, we also need the abyssal crystals we just got, as well as some presurium crystals in order to build this thing. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's see what this thing's all about. All right, and here we go. This guy's already starting to look interesting. Oh boy. And yeah, we now have a full-on tank in Subnautica. Wow, this thing is something else. As you can see, it looks like we have some power cells right here. And then we have this huge thruster in the back. Holy. And yeah, it's a huge underwater tank. That is quite the barrel we have right there. Let's go ahead and jump inside. Oh, we can switch the power cells right here. Never mind. These are not power cells, I don't think. I'm not sure what they are. But anyways, yeah, let's jump inside and check this guy out. And let's start moving this guy around. So you can kind of move the main body around with WASD. But then, of course, the turret right here moves independently from that, as you can see. There's a bunch of stuff down here. But let's go ahead and fire some torpedoes and see what this thing is capable of. Boom, there we go. I believe these torpedoes are actually homing, too. So you're going to be hard-pressed to miss. Boom, I'm so sorry, Reefback. This isn't personal. Yeah, you can see they're moving to hit their target. And as you can also see at the very bottom, it shows our torpedo count. And it slowly recharges over time so you do have infinite torpedoes with this thing and we finally destroyed it wow look at that so yeah this is quite the weapon infinite torpedoes is pretty much insane it also has a harpoon system just besides the normal torpedoes let's check this out so the point of this is that you grapple on the creatures you're trying to kill right all right let's test it out on this reaper leviathan here all right our harpoon system should be enabled let's grab onto it there we go and now wow okay he's attacking us as you can see, we've grabbed onto him and we can start unloading torpedoes at him. Yeah, here we go. Boom, look at that. And so, yeah, this thing's pretty goaded, as you can see. You can hold your targets and then just shoot the crap out of them with these. And yeah, he's dead with these torpedoes, I believe I was saying. So, yeah, this is quite the idea. I will say this is definitely something I never expected to see in Subnautica. There are a few more things to check out. First, you can switch your view right here so you can have a camera on the top or on the bottom. And then there's this boost with left shift right here uh this thing's actually really fast it allows you to get around the crater incredibly fast and it basically has no recharge either so you can just kind of zoom around in this thing there is another funny thing i noticed about this boost let me just see if i can show you that really quickly all right here we go and zoom we are way up in the air yeah definitely an intended feature trust me guys so yeah this guy's very cool uh you also notice you can switch the primary with r which will switch between having the harpoon system on or the torpedo system on and as you might have guessed with the moon pool on that dad submarine you can also dock this sock tank inside of the dad sub which of course is very useful here we go and boom we're docked and everything all right would you look at that so yeah that's very useful you can take your dad submarine anywhere in the crater and then just jump out in your sock tank and blow up leviathans all right but before we head to this new signal there's a couple things i have to show you really quickly so first off there's a few new things that have been added to the fabricator and you'll notice them in the tool sections right here we now have a boomerang boomerang and a magmaring magmaring and yes they do exactly what you think they do and yeah we now have boomerangs in subnautica this first First one here basically just does damage to things and then it should come back to me there you go and then this next one does a little bit more than just a little bit of damage boom we have a whole bomb and everything since it's a magma one and it should come back to me sometimes it kind of floats around me i'm not quite sure where it went oh here we go yeah here he is let's get him come on and up uh there we go. All right. So yeah, these guys are also cool little additions. Probably pretty useful for killing leviathans and stuff or just creatures. Like, let's test it out on this gasopod over here. I'm so sorry, gasopod. This is not personal. Boom. And yeah, he is completely dead. Look at that. It does a lot of damage. And let's get this guy back. Boom. There we go. So yeah, that's basically all there is to that. It's yet another thing I really just never expected to see in Subnautica. But there is one more thing I'd like to show you really quickly, and that's the leviathan holographic projector. But this essentially displays creatures that you've defeated let's go ahead and build it i suppose i think you can build this outside so yeah it displays this creature right now looks like you can change the display this might just be the placeholder since i haven't really killed any of lithons on this world yet but yeah again this is honestly a really great item and i think it honestly turned out looking really good but now it's time to head to the reactor access again this is only the approximate location but i'm actually gonna teleport right to the base all right welcome to the third alien base 
lakes here. As you can see, we have an angler fish and stuff over there. Some more void islands with a bunch of uh, precursor equipment on them. Let me go ahead and turn on fog for you guys. Pretty much the same kind of feel as every single other base before this one. But before I show you that, there is actually one little Easter egg that you can encounter in this area that I'd like to show you really quickly. So while we're near this alien base, if we go ahead and head inside of the dead submarine, something unusual happens that I'd like to show you. All right, so the moment I pilot this sub is when it should happen, and here we go. All right, let's, uh, what is going on? Hold on, what is that noise? And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the noise that you were hearing. And so this is supposed to be basically just a massive, massive Leviathan. I'm not exactly sure why it's so loud, but it's gonna grab my sub and then it's gonna go away. So yeah, that's an interesting concept. I suppose it's kind of playing on the fear of there just being this creature so big, you could almost hardly comprehend it. And again, you're also supposed to see that inside of the dad submarine with fog off but i feel like it's easier to see what's actually going on when you're outside and so yeah that's another interesting idea and it kind of prevents you from using the dad sub in this area all right it's finally time for me to show you this alien base here and there isn't really much to it we just have this interesting teleporter and an ion cube right here so i guess let's go ahead and uh activate the teleporter here and there we go that was the glitchiest animation ever but it's now activated and i wonder where it leads now another interesting thing that is actually intended is that you can actually bring the sock tank with you to wherever this teleporter takes you so let's go ahead and bring one i guess all right ladies and gentlemen here we go let's see where this is gonna take us and we're going through welcome ladies and gentlemen to the final boss of subnautica yes there is now a final boss i certainly hope you've read the title of this video and this is what he looks like oh my gosh okay yeah we're gonna uh, have to abandon ship here looks like oh my gosh hello please leave me alone ah uh, i'm in creative bro you shouldn't even be able to see me what on earth holy ah uh, but yeah there's like a million other leviathans in here too which is all a part of the final boss sequence i'm actually gonna go ahead and kill them really quickly with some console commands uh because right now this is just complete chaos wow i don't even know what's happening there are way too many creatures all right there we go everything should be dead i think maybe i missed a few i don't know so this is the arena you're supposed to fight the final boss i'm not actually going to fight him legit of course but he shoots out these huge beams at you that do a ton of damage and so as you might have guessed it's going to be extremely difficult there's a bunch of precursor equipment lying around and then we have this huge reactor thing in the center we see if I can show you a closer look of this guy really quickly as you can see he has five heads and he shoots five things at you it looks like wow okay yeah there's a lot of stuff happening I'll show you this guy in free cam a little bit better in a minute but now I just kind of want to explain how you're supposed to beat this guy now another thing you might notice is how huge this arena is as you can see I'm like barely moving it seems like because everything here is just seriously massive all right so this guy right here that's heading towards me is actually key that's known as a orange homing bolt from what i understand and very similarly to the ender dragon fight you're supposed to lead these orange bolts into these guys right here which are known as precursor pylons and as you can also kind of see here they also shoot these laser thingies which is another similarity to the ender dragon fight but anyways what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to lead the orange homing bolts which i showed you just earlier and make them hit these precursor pylons so we're gonna go ahead and hide behind this guy and see if we can get it to do that kind of hide in here there we go and there we go as you can see the pylon has been destroyed and you're gonna do that with a ton of pylons as you can see there's some on the ceiling there's a ton on the floor and this would of course be with all the other leviathans and this guy shooting things at you so it's gonna be complete chaos and it's gonna be extremely difficult to pull off I'm not actually going to show you me destroying all these pylons because that would take forever, but I'm going to fast forward to the last pylon. All right, we have one pylon left, so just pay attention when I destroy this thing and see what happens with everything in this arena. As you might have guessed, pay close attention to the reactor thing at the very center because these pylons might be related somewhat to that reactor. All right, we're getting close here. It should happen very soon. We got an orange bolt coming our way and it should run into this guy and that should be the end of the boss 
Boom. Imminent explosion. Avoid reactor at all costs. Oh boy, guys. It's going down. It's seriously going down. Holy cow. I don't even know what's happening anymore. So yeah, everything's shaking and it looks like the reactor at the center has been destabilized. Oh boy. This does not look good, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Green screen. That was quite the explosion, guys. And yep. The final boss, I like to call it the multi-garg because it kind of has five garg heads, is now defeated. And yeah, we've defeated the final boss of Subnautica. We've completed the game. We can now leave the planet without this guy eating the neptune rocket which yes of course it was this guy who ate the neptune rocket at the very start we now have this weird thing at the very center i wonder what it could possibly be some of you smart guys out there might have guessed it we'll see all right and here we go any second now and here we go boom and credits roll that's it we finally beat the game that is subnautica but it has a final boss, I suppose. Very interesting concept. The idea of there being a final boss in Subnautica definitely goes against what Unknown Worlds actually wanted for this game, which is kind of funny. But anyways, I like a lot of things in this mod. It's very exceptionally made. To some extent, it almost feels like it isn't quite complete. It almost feels like we have a really good start and we should keep going with it, but I don't think that's actually going to happen. But yeah, there's still a few things I want to show you really quickly here after these credits. And as you can see, new blueprint synthesized boss statue. I'll show you that in just a minute. But beforehand, I want to spawn in all the new Leviathans above water and kind of show you how big they are. Especially the Multigar, because you might not realize how absolutely huge he is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Multigar. Yeah, he's pretty dang massive you can kind of see his body a little bit better because you couldn't totally see it in the boss fight got a nice tail thingy right here these nice leg or fin thingies i guess and yeah five heads pretty cool thing let me go ahead and spawn in some of the other leviathans as well here's the abyssal blaza it's actually pretty long holy cow i didn't even realize that not quite as long as the multi-garg of course and then there's the ancient bloop as well may as well show you the size of the anglerfish as well it's honestly a lot bigger than this guy i didn't even realize why Wow, it's actually massive, yeah. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we also have this boss statue, which is, of course, a statue of the final boss to kind of revel in your glory of beating Subnautica's final boss, I suppose. This is what it looks like and everything. But yeah, I believe that is everything that's been added in this mod. I will say this is probably the most unique mod I've ever looked at on this channel. It was quite the experience, and I really hope you enjoy this just as much as I did. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.